This week, I'll answer the question, how much should I charge? Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. Well, this week's question comes from a lot of people, and the question has been sent to me in email. It's been posted as a comment on YouTube and Vimeo. People have posted it on my Facebook page and sent me tweets about it. The question simply is, how much should I charge? Well, this is a question I hear all the time. I hear it from students who want to make the jump from a hobbyist to professional, but I also hear it from many new professional photographers. And if you take a look at any photography forum, you'll see it's a very hot topic. Well, before I begin, let me say that what I'm about to describe is not the only way to determine rates. And for full disclosure, the principles I'm talking about in this episode are the things we do here at Snap Factory. That's the creative agency my wife and I own here in Phoenix. These are not necessarily the views and opinions of Adorama, our sponsor, who have their own business practices. This is the way that I do things, and I'm happy to share them with you. Well, first, let's figure out what we're trying to do here. You want to know how much to charge and you need to figure out your rates. You want to have fair prices, but you always also want to make a profit. So where do you start? Well, for a moment, let's forget about the fact that you are a photographer. Let's just say that you're in business and you have goods and services to sell. Now, the same principles apply to your business as the person selling widgets down the street. You both have costs. You both have supply and you both have demand or lack of demand for your products. So what are the widgets that you're selling? There may be more to what you're offering than you realize. When you show up for a job and take a photo, what exactly does the client get out of the deal? Well, let's list a few things. They get your time, your experience, a standard of quality, your style, and media of some sort like prints or a CD. Now, of all of these things, the only constant is time. One hour of my time is the same as one hour of your time. An hour is an hour. But what does the client get during that hour? Everything besides time is variable and will change as you grow as a photographer. You're going to gain experience, your style will evolve, and the quality of your work will get better. Therefore, an hour of my time is not the same as an hour of your time to the client. They won't get exactly the same thing from that hour. So now let's chat about a very important concept, and that is the daily cost of doing business. What are your costs? You absolutely have to have an understanding of your costs or your business will not survive. So let's take a look at some of the most common costs. That includes Salary, retirement, health insurance, income tax, unemployment insurance, social security taxes, business licenses, accountants fees, sales taxes, shipping costs, shipping supplies, cleaning supplies, rent, water, gas, and electric bills, deposits for utilities, camera equipment, computer equipment, the cost of your nephew who helps you expand your computer network, self-promotion costs, Educational expenses like Kelby Training and Lynda.com, subscriptions to trade magazines, association fees, expenses for attending Photo Plus or WPPI or Imaging USA, insurance for your studio and your equipment, accounting fees, bank fees, credit card processing fees, expendables like gaff tape and seamless paper and gels, and office supplies, phone, internet, and cell phone costs, travel costs, meals, talent, assistance clothes, web hosting costs, ink and photo paper, software licensing, craft services, framing and matting fees, costs of independent contractors like makeup artists, hairstylists, second shooters at weddings, landscape companies, and real estate brokers. And as you can see, this list can get to be extremely long. And the one thing I didn't include on this list is time. Now, time is your most valuable asset. Never forget that. Now, it's a good idea to actually write down every single cost you have or use a spreadsheet. You need to calculate your costs on an annual basis. Now, the best way to understand your costs are to track them over time using accounting software. Now, we use QuickBooks Online and absolutely love it. And the nice thing is the longer you're in business, the better you're going to understand what your costs are. 
All right, now take all of your costs for an entire year and divide that by the number of days you plan to work. This is usually 250 days per year. And this is going to give you your daily cost of doing business or DCODB. Now you have a realistic place to start when figuring out your rates. Now remember, this is the rock bottom number that you have to bring in every single day of work. And if you don't know what your daily cost of doing business is, then you should get cracking on your books. You have to know what this number is. Now daily cost of doing business is going to be different for different people. For instance, if you're a married stay-at-home mom who shoots children's portraits, your retirement and benefits are probably covered by your spouse. And if you don't own a studio, your rent is lower and your insurance rates are different. You get the idea. It's different for each photographer. All right, well, let's put all of this together and figure out how much to charge. Now, for the sake of argument and easy math, let's say that your daily cost of doing business is $80. If you work an eight hour day, you need to pull in $10 an hour just to cover the basis. Now for the record, I hate figuring hourly rates and I rarely charge my clients by the hour and I almost always charge by a half day or a full day and you'll see why here in a little bit. Well, now that you have your daily cost of doing business, it's easier to give a fair price. So if someone asks what you charge to come shoot for a day, you can use a very simple formula. And that formula is the daily cost of doing business plus your production costs plus your markup and that will give you your rate. All right, well, let's put it together. Let's say our pretend client wants you to come to their location for a couple hours one morning and shoot their car collection. And while you're out there, why not throw in a family photo in front of the Ferrari? So how much would that be? Well, you know your daily cost of business is $80. But what about the other costs? Now don't do this in your head. Do the math and make sure you get it right. Now this is why photographers who've been around a while won't give you an answer right on the spot if you ask them what it'll cost. They need to make sure they calculate the costs accurately and give you a good estimate. And QuickBooks is terrific for this because that's what it's built for. So let's break down our estimate. So we know our shoot is gonna take about two hours, so you should charge $20, right? Well, no, that's not right. You'll have to drive to the location, you have to set things up, and then you have to shoot, and then you have to drive back. And then there are some hidden costs, like transferring the photos from the card to a computer and unloading and setting up everything and uh, taking everything down and putting it back into the car and all kinds of things. And so at the very least, you're not gonna be able to book anything else for that morning, so you need to begin with a half day rate. And so if you look at it, the daily cost of business divided by two is gonna give you a half day rate of $40. So what about other costs? Well, let's make up some fake numbers and add everything up. So for example, you're gonna need an assistant, that's 20 bucks, and you need some rental gear because you don't own everything, so that's gonna cost you $5. And you need some gas to get to that location, that's a dollar. And then you need to give the client some comps on a CD, and it's gonna cost you about a buck for that CD. So the real cost is actually $67, but the deal is you're a terrific photographer and the client loves you and you do amazing work. And the other thing is five other people want you to shoot at the same time for the same thing, so your demand is high and the supply is low. So you can add a few dollars because your perceived value is high. But what if you're just starting out? You know, nobody else knows that you exist and maybe your work is okay at best and you're just cutting your teeth. Well, maybe you should just shoot for free to get the experience. Well, absolutely not. Don't do that. At least charge your real cost because if you don't, you're going to be out of business really soon. Now, you can always lower your real costs by paying yourself less and maybe skipping on the assistant or taking other cost-saving actions. Now you should always meet with your client before the shoot, even if it's on the phone, to determine exactly what they expect as the outcome of the shoot. So in this example, the family may want a full-sized frame portrait for the family room. Did you include that in your estimate? And are you marking up what Adorama Picks is gonna charge you to make that large print? And did you take into account the time you're gonna spend in post-production getting the file ready for print? Are you considering paper and ink costs and mounting fees? 
It doesn't matter what the expenses are, but make sure you track those because it's very important for determining your cost. Well, that model works best for most photographers, but what if you're a commercial photographer and you need to charge for licensing fees? If you shoot for a commercial client, your rate structure is going to be almost the same. We're just going to add one little tweak. So it looks something like this. Daily cost of doing business plus production costs plus post-production plus licensing plus your markup equals your fee. Now we normally bill post-production as half-day increments depending on how much work we have to do or we contract graphic designers and retouchers to do the work for us and then just pass the bill plus a small markup onto our client. Now licensing images can be a little bit sticky and so what we do is we use a very simple formula for figuring this out. We ask our clients to show us the numbers of the total media buy and we use a sliding scale. The larger the buy, the smaller the percentage. So let me explain using some hypothetical numbers. Let's say the client is buying advertising in four magazines, one billboard, and 20 mall banners. Well, the total media buy is, hypothetically, $40,000. So we charge a percentage of that amount. So for the sake of argument, let's say that percentage is 10% because it's a mid-sized campaign. So our licensing fee is then $4,000. But let's say it's a small client and they're just going to buy an ad in the local newspaper for $300. Well, our percentage would grow to be 20%, but the cost would only be $60 for that client. Well, let's go to the other end of the spectrum. Let's say our client was huge and the media buy was a million dollars, maybe even more than that. Well, we'd charge a smaller percentage, somewhere around 3%, but our licensing to the client would be $30,000. Well, we like the sliding scale method for determining licensing. It's easy for the client to understand and it's easy for them to put into their budget. Now, what the actual percentages are and how long the images are licensed are things we look at very closely and they're a part of our corporate strategy. Now, I can't share specifics, but you have enough information to understand the principles and then put those principles into effect for your specific business. Well, I hope this gives you a start on determining your rates and making sure you have proper pricing. To get solid advice for your specific business needs, I suggest you do a few things. If you don't have a grasp on basic business principles, then get some help or take some classes. For example, do you know what ROI is and do you know how economies of scale affect your buying power and pricing? Do you know what depreciation is and how to calculate it? Do you have an EIN? Well, if you're unsure about any of these things, you should get some help from a professional number cruncher. Here are some other tips. Hire an accountant to help you get started. Use QuickBooks to track everything. Always have a written business plan. Join Professional Photographers of America and enroll in Studio Management Services. It's business school for photographers and it's worth it. Read industry magazines like Picture Magazine, PDN, Communication Arts, and How. Now this video is by no means extensive. You'll need to do the work to fully understand the business you're in and set appropriate rates. Now the other thing is you're going to be tweaking your rates until you retire. It's also worth noting that you should also have a very solid understanding of marketing. You should know how to calculate your ROI or return on investment for everything you do. This is going to help you fine tune your business and stop doing things that make some money for those that make lots of money. Well, thanks so much for joining me this week. If you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. Also, make sure you check out the Adorama Learning Center for more articles about photography, as well as all of the past episodes of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Well, you'll need to know what... Sorry. Dang it, sorry. You know what? Sorry. Darn it, sorry. First, let's figure out what we're trying to do here. Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.